Planning on witnessing a solar eclipse anytime soon? Then stick around. You might have heard some things about eclipses that aren't exactly true, but we're here to set the record straight. The idea at the heart of most of the myths surrounding solar eclipses is that the sun somehow becomes more dangerous during the process of an eclipse. The basic concept is that the light and radiation emitted from the sun is changed somehow by the moon moving into its path. While modern society is, generally speaking, past the idea that the darkness is forever and that the light will never return when an eclipse happens, some people may choose to stay inside because of the uncertainty such an event seems to bring. It is an eclipse. What is that? <gasps> Thankfully, you have nothing to worry about if you're standing in the shadow of an eclipse. The dangers from the sun in an eclipse are the same as they are when there isn't an eclipse, which is to say there's not none, but there's not more. Wear sunscreen if you're going to be out, and use appropriate protection for your eyes if you're going to look up at the sun as the moon passes by. But you don't need to invest in a biohazard suit, just bring a normal jacket if you're going to be outside, as temperatures tend to drop quite a bit during totality, when the moon completely covers the sun. One specific kind of harm that people worry about when it comes to solar eclipses is that they can blind you if you look directly at them. This is again related to the idea of the sun producing some kind of unique radiation during the eclipse. Part of the reason for this belief is that during totality, the sun's corona, which is usually too hard to see because of the light from the sun's surface, becomes visible. Since many people don't know that it's always there, they might think that something bad is happening with the sun. In truth, the electromagnetic radiation from the corona is a million times weaker than typical sunlight, and it definitely doesn't have the power necessary to blind people on its own. The danger of looking at an eclipse is exactly the same as the danger of looking directly at the sun on a normal day, which is to say, it can do some serious damage. The big difference is that there's actually a reason to look at the sun when an eclipse takes place. So don't stare directly at the sun, eclipse or not. Even a small amount of exposure to direct sunlight can damage your eyes. It's beautiful. Since looking at the sun unprotected is so bad for you, some people believe that there's no way to observe a solar eclipse directly without risking your eyesight. They often turn to methods of indirectly viewing the phenomenon, like eclipse projectors and pinhole cameras, or they just avoid it entirely. It would be sad to miss such a fascinating event for that reason, though, as there are ways to see it without risking your retinas. While it's unsafe to look at the sun, even with the aid of normal sunglasses, it's perfectly fine to view an eclipse through these special solar viewing glasses that everyone sells when an eclipse is on its way. These are much darker and have to meet certain safety standards. If you're a welder or know someone who is, is, welding glasses with a shade rating of 12 or higher are essentially the same as the commercially available eclipse glasses in terms of light filtering. Just make sure you have your eyewear ready when it's time, because the rotation of the moon isn't going to slow down just for you. The eclipse is starting! Put on your eclipse glasses! If you've ever learned about the cause of the different seasons on Earth, you probably know that the Earth's axis isn't straight up and down relative to its orbital path around the Sun. Instead, the Earth's axis is tilted about 23.5 degrees compared to its orbit, meaning that different latitudes get different amounts of direct sunlight at different times of the year. Because of this axial tilt and how it affects the angle of the Sun's rays hitting the Earth's surface, some people believe that the North and South Poles are at angles that make it impossible to have solar eclipses there. While it's true that the polar regions don't get as many total eclipses as other places, there are a couple of good reasons. There's less land for the path of totality to cross, and polar regions only get sunlight for half a year, meaning that there are fewer opportunities for eclipses. Astronomically speaking, there's nothing keeping eclipses from taking place at the poles. In fact, the last total eclipse visible from the North Pole was on March 20, 2015, and the last one in Antarctica was on November 23, 2003. If you need to see it to believe it, the next total eclipse at the South Pole will be in December 2039, so be sure to book your tickets across the Drake Passage now before it's all sold out. If you've ever had the opportunity to witness a total solar eclipse, the moon probably looked like an absolute void of darkness. You would see the black circle of the sun, the corona wriggling out around it, and then the dark of the sky. It doesn't seem like anything could possibly be darker than that. How much more black could this be? And the answer is none. None is that good? more black. It turns out, though, that it actually could be more black. You know how the light of the sun reflects off the moon at night and creates moonlight? If you've ever seen photos from the moon landings, you probably know that the same thing happens with the Earth. 
Sunlight reflects off the Earth and creates what is called Earth shine, which is very bright as seen from the Moon. Even though the Moon's shadow blocks the Sun's light across the path of totality, the Sun is still shining at full daylight on the rest of the Earth's surface. As a result, this Earth shine reflects back onto the near surface of the Moon with a pale white glow. It's just hard to see, because the Sun's corona shining around the outer edge of the Moon is so much brighter. In Mexico, around the time that European colonizers were beginning to arrive, there was a belief in circulation that a solar eclipse could have harmful effects on a pregnant woman and her unborn fetus, leading to birth defects or even miscarriages. This belief wasn't exclusive to modern Mexico, and in fact has persisted well into contemporary times. It has simply evolved from being understood to be some kind of cosmic curse to being thought to be caused by the radiation from the sun. In this case, the culprits are neutrinos, tiny solar particles that are constantly hitting us like an invisible rain shower. Minuscule mass, um, no electrical charge, they pass through ordinary matter almost undisturbed. This belief is current enough that a pregnancy blog in 2012 highlighted how some expectant mothers believed that if an eclipse was on the way, they should wear red underwear with a safety pin attached to protect their child. Once the baby is born, an open pair of scissors under their bed is apparently supposed to ward off neutrinos. As you might expect, eclipses aren't inherently harmful to either parents or unborn babies. Our bodies are being hit by trillions of neutrinos all the time, night or day, eclipse or not, and they are completely safe. Besides, there's not much anyone could do to stop them, no matter what color their underwear is. The fear of unique radiation bathing the Earth in its rays during a solar eclipse extends beyond retinas and wombs. There is a belief still in contemporary circulation that eclipses, solar and lunar alike, cause any food prepared during them to become poisonous. A more mystic and less scientific explanation for this danger, as posed by some spiritual leaders, suggests that eclipses trick the Earth by passing through an entire light-dark cycle much faster than usual, causing food to go bad immediately. So, neither that or radiation. Of course, just a bit of critical thought disproves this notion. If an eclipse was ruining the food on your stove, it would also be hitting the food in your fridge, in your pantry, at the grocery store, on produce trucks, in the fields, and wherever anything edible might be found. Nothing would be safe to eat, and the people of Earth would have to start agriculture over from scratch every time the moon crossed the sun. It's possible, even likely, that superstitious associations arose from a coincidental case of food poisoning during an eclipse, which were linked together through confirmation bias. Fortunately, you can enjoy a nice picnic during totality without having to worry about your snacks going bad. Not all superstitious beliefs about solar eclipses are negative. There is a belief in Italian folklore that eclipses are good luck as far as your garden is concerned. Anything planted during the event is supposed to grow bigger, better, and more beautiful. But in reality, there's nothing suggesting that this is actually the case. Ah, oh, the moon blocks out the sun, big deal. I've got a billboard outside my apartment does the same thing. That's not to say that flowers aren't affected by eclipses at all. As you likely remember from science class, plants rely on sunlight for photosynthesis, the process by which they nourish themselves and grow. Some flowering plants are known to close their petals at night when there is no sunlight to absorb. These same plants, including the morning glory and the hibiscus, have been observed closing up during the totality of a solar eclipse like they would at night, and opening again a few minutes later like they would in the morning. Likewise, animals are often known to react in strange ways to the sudden drop in light and temperature as if night had suddenly fallen. Some animals, like horses and dogs, tend to get spooked by eclipses, but there's no evidence of any plant or animal being genetically affected by one. In a very broad sense, eclipses have been, and continue to be, seen as omens of ill fortune. The Greek historian Herodotus recorded an incident in which the Persian ruler Xerxes interpreted an eclipse as a sign that his enemies will be destroyed. The biographer Plutarch told how the Athenian leader Pericles made fun of his soldiers when they panicked at the sight of an eclipse by making a shadow with his cloak and asking if that was an omen too. A number of other historical deaths and disasters have been said to have followed an eclipse, which has led people to believe that eclipses are signs that some kind of disaster is coming. When the sun is eclipsed, 
I will unleash the croc. As with the poisoning myth, seeing eclipses as bad omens is the result of confirmation bias. Human brains always look for patterns, so they notice when two things happen at the same time and ignore every time they don't. Eclipses aren't that rare in the grand scheme of things, and scientists have mapped out exactly where and when each one will occur for the next thousand years. If something bad happens to you, it probably has nothing to do with the solar eclipse, unless you look directly at it and damage your eyes. If you've made it this far into the video, you probably understand that eclipses are purely scientific phenomena pretty well understood by astronomers. This probably means that it goes without saying, but we'll say it anyway. No, a giant monster is not eating the sun. Before we knew that with complete certainty, though, legends of colossal sun swallowers were told across the ancient world to try to understand the strange celestial happening that is a solar eclipse. Eclipses were a major disruption for ancient peoples, who relied on the consistent behavior of the sun and moon to make sense of the world and make their day-to-day -day lives work. When eclipses happened, ancient people would weep, yell, shoot arrows at the sky, beg forgiveness from the gods, and make sacrifices, all to try to scare off whatever was making the sun disappear. They will eat the sun. And then they will eat the stars. The ancient Egyptians attributed eclipses to an evil god set in disguise as a black pig jumping up to attack the sun. The Buryat people of Siberia say that eclipses are the work of a monster called Arako, who used to eat hair but has moved on to the sun. But he can't hold on to it, so the sun comes back. Some South American cultures thought that a giant bird was flying up and blocking the sun. In other cultures, eclipses could be the effect of the sun and moon fighting, or the opposite of fighting. Hopefully, it's not necessary to point out that these things aren't true, but just in case, no, they're not true.